200 different... No, uh, you don't really. So when you implement it, you... Right, right. The other thing, actually, the way C works is you can have variables as long as, long as you want, but they only recognize the first so many characters. So they just let you make up strings as long as you want. Right, so the grammar so will parse it and say, okay. And you see, the, but this kind of, this is, you're, you're asking questions now that are bordering on, on the other course of compiling. There's three parts to a compiler. There's the scanner. That's the part that uses a finite state machine. That's the part that the tool Lex lets you do quickly. The scanner looks through the language and pulls out things like IF and spits it to you in a chunk instead of you having to look at it at the character level. So it pulls out the tokens. It lifts it up one level of abstraction. And pulling out and looking for tokens, you can do with a finite state machine. The next step is you're given tokens, something that looks like a potential uh, string in your language, and you want a program to run through this grammar and check if it's syntactically correct. And that's parsing. And that's what we're really talking about. And then the next step, which is a good third to a half of the compiler course, is now that you've done that, how do you generate the code and make the thing run? And that deals with symbol tables and all sorts of issues that come up with different ways of solving the kind of things that you're asking and that you're asking. And that we're not touching at all. Not that it's not interesting and it's not practical. It is. It's just a lot. And we don't have anywhere near the time to squeeze it into this course. It's always a separate course. Is parsing also done with a context-free grammar? Yeah, parsing, yes. Parsing and scanning. Scanning is done with a finite state machine. Oh, parsing is done with a context-free grammar. And the tool for parsing is a tool called YAC, yet another compiler compiler, where you basically describe your context-free grammar, and it automatically builds a program that will do the membership test for you. And, uh, and you know, depending on who you talk to, like Lex, you know, it automatically does the finite state recognition for you when you describe your finite state machine. A good programmer and a hacker says, I'll make my own finite state machine recognizer. I can do that. And before you know it, he's already coding. And while you finish your conversation, it's already there. You know, and it's 50 lines long, and it works perfectly fine. And I'm, got, I'm not going to go learn how to use Lex, you know, because it's a pain in the butt. I have to learn this new syntax when I can just write it on my own from scratch. It's a good point. You can write it on your own from scratch, and there's no reason not to. It turns out that the Lex is a really good tool, and that almost anything that you do from scratch on your own is going to be less efficient than the one that Lex does automatically for you, and be slower. And what's more, there are things that, once you do get used to Lex, are just much more convenient, and really do speed you up. So it's like any tool. If you use it a lot and you get used to it, you should use it. And if you can use it once in a blue moon, it's not worth learning. Anyhow, uh, it's a cool tool. And, and Rusty, when are you going to do that? Uh, tomorrow, maybe? Either this afternoon or tomorrow. This afternoon or tomorrow, Rusty will show you a good example. What did you do? You made a, you made a scanner that, that looks for? I think you're just going to do a calculator. A calculator, OK. So the parsing part is checking if it's the correct expression. And the scanning part is pulling out the digits, the numbers. OK. Everybody get the example that we'll do? It's a, it's a perfect example. Perfect. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> OK, we're up to Chomsky Normal Forum. Here's all the great motivations. They're all so interesting. They're all so neat. You'll appreciate them every time we get to these stages. And now we're doing it. And like I said, I got to tell you, it's dry. I don't like it. But I need to teach it to you. And I will try to make it as interesting as possible by Inviting people up to dance in between each step or something. I don't know what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> you get Where's our, our professional dancer isn't here today, so what are we going to do? Um, Jeff will do the discrete math dance. CNF, Chomsky Normal Form. CNF also stands for conjunctive normal form, which has nothing to do with Chomsky normal form. That's a way of taking logical expressions and making them with ands and ors. And that's also written CNF. I don't know. It's not like a domain name service you know, where you have to pay for your abbreviation and then nobody else can use it. So, but people write them both. Chomsky normal form. Here's what it is. Every single production looks like this. Capital letter, double capital letter on the right, or capital letter single terminal on the right. That's it. Every production, double capital letter or single terminal. Double non-terminal or single terminal. And 
That is enough flexibility to capture any context-free language. You give me a context-free grammar, I can convert that context-free grammar to one that looks like this. And in many ways, it's the best you can do, because you know that if I insist on this capital B being a terminal symbol, we're at the regular set level. If I insist on this capital C being a terminal symbol, we're at the regular set level. So, so this is a pretty simple grammar to be able to capture all the possible grammars available. All right, all productions look like one of these. How do we show that any grammar can be turned into a grammar like that? Step by step by step, we will do it and try to make it intuitive. I want to motivate this a bit. So, All right, there's a fraction of a grammar, at least. Completely not in Chomsky normal form. I want you to think about what kind of things do you have to do to get this into Chomsky normal form. Not the details of what you have to do, but the big picture. What kind of productions do you have to take care of that are bad, that mess you up? Well, there's one that's OK, that guy. So if you got any of these, leave them. That's easy. These are bad. They're too short. These are not allowed. Only real terminal symbols, not ones that don't have any content, like the empty string. Empty string productions are not allowed. Only real terminal symbols. That's what lets us have that 2n minus 1 thing, because you never erase symbols. You grow them, and you grow them until they hit the string. You don't erase them. So empty strings don't exist in these. So that's bad. Recursion on S is okay. S goes to empty. I'll get to that. Okay. Clever question. Yeah, I mean, I, Todd, look, what if the empty string's in the language, right? I can't just leave it out completely. So there's one exception to the empty string. If the empty string's in the language, you make a new start symbol that goes to S and the empty string. That's the only exception to Chomsky normal form, is that if the empty string's in the language, you're allowed one single, you know, non-terminal here and one empty string there. Otherwise, it really is consistent. Two non-terminals, one terminal. I don't know if that's what you meant, but it's kind of what you meant. You, you will not ever get S going to empty. If it happens, it's going to be filtered at and look just like this. This is the only time you'll see an empty or a what's called a unit production. Only one unit production allowed. This one's no good. Too short. Too short. This one's no good. Too big. Yeah, Chris, what are you thinking? Yeah, nothing. Nothing? All right. These are really short. Definitely no good. These don't even seem close. Which of these problems seems hard to you? Which seems easy? Tell me how to solve any of these problems. Can you solve any of them? Can you fix any of these productions? Sure. Without losing the acceptability of this, without losing the semantics of the grammar? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you trust me? After all these months, huh? All right, uh, somebody there said sure. Who said sure in the corner? Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he trusts me. Yeah, Joe, you got an idea? Well, I, I would start with the A0, 0A, zero, zero 1B. All right, how do you get that to do anything? I mean, that's got terminals in the middle, for crying out loud, right? That's just a mess. I would convert that to, say, one terminal and then two, can you add letters? Yeah. You can do anything you want, as long as it doesn't then change then the. add two letters, so that, which would represent those four, that, that repetition. So, kind of say, let's see, A can go to zero, which would be the terminal, to show, I'm, ass I'm assuming the A is zero, A would, be, A would be a repetition. So it would be A can go to either to zero or to, let's say, GG, which would represent the, and then GG can go back to itself or zero. I'm not following, because GG, you can't have GG on the left side of something.